everybody. Uh, we are starting our chicken penne pasta cook today. Um, it's going to start off a lot like the chicken pot pie. Uh, we're going to cut up the chicken and season it and get it all cooked up. Um, there are a couple variations that you could do uh, with this. You can make the sauce with milk instead of cream uh, to make it a little bit more healthy. Um, you can also use a zucchini and make zoodles out of it uh, to eliminate the pasta part. Um, we're going like full comfort food. I think I mentioned this on the last one. This is something my mom used to make for me when I was younger and I always loved it. Um, and then I would in turn make it for her, uh, for her birthday and stuff while she was still living down here and she's moved back to Minnesota. So I'm kind of bummed about that. Um, this is why we're making it tonight. We're going like full comfort. Um, so I also, I normally make this, uh, instead of the Romano, I normally make this with Asiago cheese. Um, it's a little variation on my mom's recipe, but Mac really likes it that way. Um, he actually also likes the sauce a little thinner, so sometimes I thin it out with milk, uh, and I might do that at the end for like his portion, but um, I'm going like full, hearty, comfort food. Uh, we're doing the dang thing, you know? This is not a healthy meal. <laughs> so I have a salad that we're gonna have before, you know, before this or along with this um, to get some of our vegetables in. Um, but yeah, this is not this is not a diet food. Um, it's fine. You are allowed to have comfort meals. Um, so I also just want to see show you guys this ridiculous amount of produce that I got from uh, the potatoes and bananas aside um, that I got from a friend's garden, and I like I don't know what to do with them yet. So they're just all kind of hanging out. Uh, I have no idea. I've never used these like red beans before. I have no idea what to do with them. Uh, so they're also just hanging out, and they're weird and long. Um, so yeah, if you ask me like anything about those, I, I have no idea. So anyways, um, yeah, we're going to start off by cutting the chicken. Um, and once we get that going, we'll boil our water at the same time. And this is actually a fairly easy meal to make if you have the basics down. Oh, also, I didn't include in my... Um, thanks, motorcycle. Shut up. Uh, I didn't include in my ingredients list on my community posts, but I should hopefully I'll remember to do it. We also need butter and flour to make the, excuse me, the roux. So, um, yeah, we'll get that out. Um, Dakota is been antsy. What a good girl. Are you such a good girl? Uh, it's about time for her to eat her meal. So she is, she's pacing the kitchen. And we also have the windows open because it's finally nice here. It's starting to get fall -y. Um, But I'm sure you can hear the cicadas and the traffic and stuff. But uh, like I've said a, b a bunch of times, like, I'm not going to go through and narrate this. We're narrating it as we go. And then I'm just uploading these videos. <laughs> so, um, all right, we're going to get started. Let me get everything off to the side. cutting board. Um, I get, let me see how this is framed. Yeah. So I get, um, like a big pack of chicken breasts from Walmart and then I will separate them and freeze them. Um, so like I've got, like yesterday I got six, like a pack of six chicken breasts and I freeze them and choose and um, then I pull them out from making you know, stir fry or this or whatever I'm making with it. Um, but I like buying them in bulk and popping them in the freezer because that way I know I've got them on hand. So I'm also gonna get my pan going real quick. And then on this, um, just got like a frying pan seal and we're gonna put it on medium and I cook with olive oil um, and get that heated up and going so you can just pop our chicken right into it when it's ready. So Kona is just staring at me off in the corner like yes I would also like some raw chicken but it's not happening babe. No one wants raw chicken. Go lay down, please. Coda, go lay down. 
Hope everyone's having a good day. Good week. It feels, kind of feels like it was one of those like Labor Day type weekends or like Monday just didn't exist. I don't know. I also, um, the last like week or so, well longer than that, um, I've been going to the chiropractor for the last week or so and I found out that I have uh, my femoral, my femoral nerve is swollen. So that's been causing like issues with my back and um, my leg, like just pain and tightness and all sorts of stuff. Um, but when I went to the chiropractor about it, his like first set of instructions to me were, uh, you need to go home and I don't want you lifting up anything heavier than the remote or a, a fork. And I was like, sir, I can do this. <laughs> That's the best instructions I've ever heard from a doctor. And then I haven't been following them because, I mean, there's always shit to do. Like, you have to go to Walmart and get groceries and like, all that stuff weighs more than a fork or the remote and you have to do your dishes and clean and um, so yeah. Uh, we've also been dealing with uh, somebody's first breakup um, which I won't like get into s too much details, but, uh, it's not, it was, it's not Jason, um, but, um, yeah, so that's been, it's been a lot of emotions this week, I guess, is the way to put it. Um, last Saturday, I went to a local state park, um, it's about an hour away from me with a friend, and she had grown up in that area so she went to that state park all the time as a kid and knew all the like nooks and crannies and where like weird stuff was and um like if you are ever having a bad day or you're bummed out or you're like super stressed i very much encourage you to find a green space near you or, like a park of some sort and just go be in nature for 20 minutes half an hour you know, bring a book, read, go sit out on a park bench and like scroll through TikTok, you know, like do whatever you need to make yourself feel comfortable out there. But um, walking around or just looking about you, I really feel um, that if everyone spent just 20 minutes, half an hour in nature, like once a week, it would do wonders for people's mental health. And I like, that was definitely proven to me on Saturday. I had so much fun. We saw so many different varieties of like mushrooms. We found wild ginseng trees growing in the state park in the middle of freaking Illinois. Like, I don't know, it was just, it was wild. We had, it was a very good time. Um, it was a beautiful day. And I think People would feel a lot better if they were like reminded or encouraged to go and take some time to be in nature because it, I think it just heals. At least that's the way I feel about it. There is a thing that I tend to do um, if I get depressed or whatever, and that's like turn my house into a cave. Like, block all the windows, not block all the windows, like draw the curtains and um, one of the things that like I kind of learned from Matt because he would force it to happen is like open your curtains, open the windows, like get some fresh air in your house. Yeah. Obviously if it's like seasonally appropriate, if it's like hot, that's not going to help very much. But. Um, let me see. I should check on this framing before. Yeah, it should be good. But like, yeah, don't like wall yourself in a cave. You're going to make yourself feel worse. The main, the only time, like we don't even have like blinds and stuff on most of our windows um, at the moment. So like the only time I do that now is if I have a migraine. But we have curtains in like some of our rooms, I guess, but like I dated a guy once who had, uh, 
tin foiled the windows in his apartment, uh, which looked like shit from the outside, <laughs> but like, yeah, also, um, just like turn his house into a cave and it's like, okay, that doesn't, that's not healthy. Don't do that. So we've got that done. Let's focus over yonder. I'm trying to set up the camera in a way where I'm not gonna get, I'm not gonna trip over it. Let's see if that helps. These cicadas are awful. Um, that noise, like, After so long of that making noise, that shit gives me a panic attack. Not like a full panic attack, I guess, but it makes my anxiety not awesome. And get that seasoned. I'm gonna put a little red chili flakes in there. Mac isn't a huge spice person. Um, spice doesn't like him, I should say, but this much is fine. If I were making it just for me, it might be a different story. I might put a little bit more in there. Alright, we're going to chicken cook and then we're going to get our noodles boiling. So we've got the chicken going, the water is going, I'm going to put some salt in there. I'm also going to sneeze. Excuse me. Alright, so it's just going to take a bit to cook. Chicken will probably cook a lot faster than the water will get to boiling, but that's life. And that's basically it, and then we're going to make the sauce, and the sauce is like super easy to use. Um, While all this is going, um, the parmesan that I got is already grated, but we're going to grate, uh, we're actually not going to grate the Romano. Um, it would be easier to melt, but it's also going to take longer, so we're just going to cut it. We're going to shave it, actually. So, I like a peeler. back here for this. This also works if you're wanting to like charcuterie a hard cheese. Because um, generally hard cheeses are really strong. So you don't need a lot anyway. It's for like one you know, for like your cracker or whatever. So. And I'm gonna do probably like, like a quarter of this um, to three quarters of the Parmesan. Um, probably use about half that parmesan if I was making it for more than two people. 
I've used more. Um, but this type of sauce is really difficult to heat back up. Um, so you don't like having leftovers of this is really hard to like manage. Um, there are times where I will make this and boil the noodles and then I'll make like I'll separate the noodles and chicken and make less sauce and then that way like I've got cooked noodles and chicken that I can heat up and then I can just make a bro like a fresh thing of sauce so this is about all we're using um I would say it's maybe a third of a cup to half a cup it's like not super technical but And then um, I always have a bunch of different cheeses and bags in the fridge. So, oh, no. I'll label my bag before I put cheese in it. And that way I don't mistake it for something else or like other Parmesan or something. Uh, so we've got a pound of pasta. And again, since I'm making this for just me and Mac, I'm not gonna use this whole box. I'm probably gonna use half, and then we'll still have leftovers, I would imagine, but um, you never know. I'm very hungry. Mac put away a lot of food, so this is what, if you've never had penny pasta, this is what it looks like. It's tubular. Let's, can you focus a little bit? Probably not. Um, you can use fettuccine, um, like pasta shapes, like depending on what type of sauce you're making, like pasta shapes kind of hold different types of sauces. Um, Penny's really good at holding like a thick cheesy rom uh, Alfredo sauce. chicken is cooking. This is the noodles are going. Um, this is the boring part so I will come back to you when I'm ready to drain the noodles and start making the sauce. And again like I um, I talked about this in the, the chicken pot pie um, but if I know I'm putting my chicken in something I tend to overcook it a little bit. Um, I really like the color that this gives off. Um, I like the taste that the, the deeper color gets. And I'm like always wary about chicken. Um, I can't use a meat thermometer when it's chopped up like this. Uh, so I tend to overcook it just a smidge because I know it's going in a sauce. It's going to be fine. Um, so this is pretty good. I'm going to turn this off here. It's been going for, I don't know, however long this video is, I guess. <laughs> I just only paused for about a minute after I made the last cut. Um, so yeah, we'll like cut one of the bigger pieces for to cut and yeah that's not pink or anything it'll like keep going the burner takes a while to cool off so it'll keep cooking for another couple minutes um and then yeah we just got our pasta noodles going over here so I'll come back in about 10 minutes to make the sauce um we're gonna do four tablespoons of butter to four tablespoons of flour uh, for the roux and that might be too much but that's generally how I make my roux is with four tablespoons of butter and flour each. It seems to be the best like amount I guess. Um, but yeah, so we'll be back in a bit. I'm gonna also go ahead and make my salad um, while we're waiting for the noodles. Which basically all we're waiting for at this point. Um, it's just a little chopped salad kit from Walmart. Um, I really like Caesar salad. And this one is really good. Um, it's got a good batch of pepper in it that I really like. So it's all ready to go. Just dump everything out. I like to do this a little ways beforehand to give all like the dressing and stuff time to marinate. Not a fan of the croutons though. They used to have actual croutons in there but
Like we're eating pasta, so we don't need extra cards. I mean, that's whatever. Eat what you want to eat. Eat what makes you feel good. Um, so I just put my cheese and my dressing in. I don't use this whole thing. I put maybe a quarter of it in there. Seal it. And just shake it. from a friend's garden over there in that stack of produce. I might pop a couple of those in there too, even though it's not like generally a Caesar thing, but whatever. I, I've never seen this before, but I just had like a different noodle in my pasta bag, which is fine. I'm not like mad about it, but I just was like, what the hell is that? And it's just a weird noodle. It's a weird noodle. It's fine. All right. Pasta's been going for about 11 minutes. Um, I don't know what that is like on the box. If I try to cook pasta to the box, I always think it's undercooked. Um, but I just try to bite of this and that's fine. So we're going to drain that. And then we're going to go right into our roux. Um, a lot of people like to save pasta water for a, um, like to help thicken the pasta. And this is going to be so thick, like you legitimately don't need it. I think a red sauce tends to have a, like more of an issue of thickening than white sauce does. So. Okay, so we can get our butter in there. So there's like a lot of ways that you can kind of not mess up, but harm your pasta. You want to continuously stir it. Um, once you start getting your cheese and stuff in there, and then the second that your cheese is melted, you are like, take it off heat, you're done. Cause there's like easy ways to like clot your pasta and make it so like it's like the the sauce part is one part but the cheese part is like separated it's like broken um so i make my roux i put my cream in i wait for the cream to heat up and then i put my pasta in or not i'm sorry not my pasta i put my cheese and stuff in my parmesan and then um my seasonings, stir it, stir it, stir it while cheese is melting, melting, melting. Um, and then I pop the pasta in, pop the chicken in, and take it off heat immediately. So, butter, like melted ish, there's like one tiny sliver left. All right, then we've got our flour. It's like, here's the kind of important part with this is you want to stir this for it's thickening. No how well you can see in there. I might hold it for this. But you also need this flour mixture to cook. Um, Cause this is, I mean, it's flour. You need it to not be raw. That's where like the salmonella issue comes in when you're talking about eating like cookie dough batter and stuff. It's not necessarily the eggs, it's the flour. So you want this to get kind of bubbly like it's doing um, and get kind of, it'll get a darker shade of like this tan color. And so our stove top runs hot. So I'm going to turn that down a little bit. Yeah. And you want to let this do its thing for a while, just a minute, minute and a half. And then while it's in this state,
and put some pepper in there. And I am very kind of bare bones when it comes to my Alfredo sauce. Um, I don't do garlic. I don't put onions in here. Occasionally I'll do shallot, shallots mild, um, but that's very, very rare. Okay, I'm gonna try and position the, the camera thing to put over this, but I need two hands. Oh mama, if you could see how precarious this is. This tripod situation is. It's also saying my device is hot, so. Please don't fall. Okay, we're gonna try it. This is getting bubbly. It's been cooking long enough. And this, I'm serious guys, this is all by feel. This is not like measurements. <laughs> I'm really sorry. I can tell you that I have a pint of heavy cream and I've put about half of it in. One of the ways that you can endanger your sauce is if you decide that this is not enough liquid and you have your cheese and everything's all melty and good and you have your sauce going and it's all thick and creamy and you're getting ready to take it off the stove but you decide it's not enough sauce and you pour more of your whipping cream in, you're gonna kill your sauce. So it's better to like over make your sauce here with the liquid than under make it. So I think I'm going to add, there's probably a quarter of it left. It's like here. And then this needs to get warm before it's going to do anything. Um, before it's going to thicken, thicken. It needs to get warm. So we're going to stir it. We're going to pause. We're going to stir it. We're going to pause this away. And then something like this, quicker is not always better. Um, just be patient. It's already starting to thicken. This is not something that you want to rush. You don't want to crank your stove up high. Mine's on low. I can turn it up a little bit higher, but you don't want this to scorch. Um, you don't want it to misbehave. So I have mine at like just under two on my electric stove, but our stove runs very hot. Our stove top does. And I can feel that this is getting thick just from the resistance. Yeah. It's not as thick as it's going to be, but it is thickening. And it is warm. So, also please don't do that with your finger. Like, or if you do, I'm not liable for that because that's dumb. And it's okay to do dumb stuff in your own home, but I don't recommend or endorse doing that. We got our Romano in. Got our Parmesan in. And yeah, this is where it's gonna start to really thicken. You can see that's melting very quickly. gonna get really stringy and get really good you can put vegetables in this too um, like broccoli would be really good in this 
and see how like stringy that is getting. It's not fully done yet, so I am just gonna go ahead and put this whole fucking pit in here and hope I don't split my sauce. Like I just warned y'all against. I think I should be all right. I like it really thick. Um, Midwest Magic Cleaning doesn't like it as thick as I do, but. And I like, I grew up with my mom making this. Uh, I was very fortunate to have a mother who was able to have the time to cook. I mean, she still worked, like she worked full time. Um, but like I never tried white, like jarred sauce until I was in my, I don't know, late teens to like 20 years old. And I don't understand it. Like it just, I mean, I bet if you make your own spaghetti sauce, you feel the same way about ragu, but I just, I don't know. I don't get it. Um, I'm like, that's, that's just a me thing. If you love your jarred Alfredo sauce, like more power to you because it's definitely easier than this. Um, this just tastes like home to me. And it's not quite as smooth as I want it yet. But that is so cheesy. This is like the most unhealthy. <laughs> And I'm also going to put the rest of that Parmesan in. I don't know. The Romano, uh, it's not what I go for. I normally go for the Asiago. Um, and it seems to have been a little bit more mild in here than I was anticipating. I also don't normally salt my sauce, but I'm gonna salt this. That's the trick I learned from Mac. If you like fill your little pit in your hand, that's about a table or a teaspoon. That's not much. You don't want to, if you're like familiar with kind of the basics of cutting, cooking, uh, putting something acidic in here would not be great because you're just going to curdle. It's all cheese and cream, so you're just going to curdle your stuff. So you don't want to go that route. Okay. Yep. That's the business. All right. So for the rest of this, throw our chicken in. Oops, throw the pasta in. Ooh, that was almost a disaster. Oh, we got a big fold. Fold in the cheese. If you don't know what that's from, please immediately go watch the show Shit's Creek because it's fantastic. Look at like, man, whew, that was sloppy cooking today. Good thing I just cleaned my countertops. So I would probably not recommend using the Romano. I would try and get Asiago same way. You can peel it the same way. Um, if you're lucky enough to be in a bigger area, you can get Parmesan Reggiano, which is super good. Um, we would like literally have to go to a specialty store around here to get that. That's like 25, 30 miles away. Um, like what I would not do for a Kroger nearby. 
be so excited for a Kroger. But there we go. There's chicken pie and pasta. Um, I'd also like you just do Parmesan. Um, I would also maybe add just a little bit more cream if I had it or milk, but I don't want to split the sauce. Like, normally mine's a little saucier than this. This is a lot of stringy, but it's going to taste the same. It's going to be awesome. It's going to give you that comfort food feel. Um, in my opinion, it's better than Olive Garden. But like I said, this is like home cooking for me. So, but yeah, it didn't take very long. Um, probably a little expensive. This could feed, like this could feed definitely like a family of four. Um, if your kids were like gracious enough to not be picky and eat it. This pot here. Um, I still, <laughs> there's two things. Both Mac and I eat a lot. Um, but I also am still in like... I'm cooking for children mode or like which I we haven't had our kids living here in forever so that's weird but um, yeah so I hope you liked it hope you cooked along um, I hope you if you do make this eventually I hope you enjoy another thing you could do another thing I could do if I wanted to thin this out a little bit is like pop some cream cheese in there and that would work I know a lot of people use cream cheese in their um, fettuccine alfredo or their alfredo sauce but uh, I'm just gonna leave this like this. I'm gonna call Mac down to eat and go play, I'm gonna go upload this video and then I'm gonna play some video games. So hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. Uh, I'm still coming up or trying to come up with something to do for next week. Uh, my brain keeps wanting to do uh, another cooking video. I have a stew that I'm probably gonna make tomorrow um, that is amazing and it went kind of viral on TikTok last year. Uh, coming into fall so I might film that but I might hold it for another week um, and or another two weeks and try and think of a crochet thing to do next week we'll see I don't know if you have any suggestions <laughs> leave them in the comments um, and I hope you guys like I said have a great weekend enjoy fall falls hitting in your area if it's not enjoy whatever season's upcoming for you uh, go outside and be in nature you know, go go outside and be in nature for 20 minutes and see how you feel afterwards because uh, I felt great. <laughs> so, thank you so much for watching, guys. Uh, see you later.